Gamer7, and welcome back to some more Sims 4 Create a Sim. And this particular series is a series where I take my D&D creations and try to make Sims based off of them. So today's video is going to be Valletta. Valletta is a Gorgon, which is not enough. Well, actually, um, it is a Gorgon, but some people use it as a homebrew race, say Gorgon. Some I've seen like Viperines, which is what I wrote down for her because I didn't know if I wanted to go straight for the whole using the word Gorgon path, but basically it's a Gorgon, which is Medusa, if you're not um, <laughs> familiar with the term Gorgon, it is Medusa. So, you know, the, the snake bottom half with the snakes actually on their head as, like, hair, that is, that is what she is. So, she is a homebrew race. I have a lot of homebrew races because I like to have fun with creativity. And there are some people out there that don't like the homebrew stuff, but as long as it's not overpowered and you have permission with the DM and stuff like that, who cares? It's it's about having fun, so yeah, anyway. <laughs> but she is a quite an interesting character, so I did, even though I did didn't use the term Gorgon, I did use Medusa's, like, story slightly as inspiration. So she, you know, her group of people aren't necessarily treated the best, even though they're, like, you know, I want to imagine it personally that none of, none of the races are outright just evil. Uh, like, you know, like, in some stories and stuff like that, orcs are always evil, but in my view, some races have a higher chance of having more evil people in them, but no race in particular is solely good or solely evil or more leaning one or the other, necessarily, <laughs> realistically. Now, would people view them that way? Yes, um, <laughs> because that's just a whole thing of people viewing a group of people in a negative way or a positive way without really knowing that race or that group of people very well. Sadly, it's a thing that happens in real life and it also happens in fantasy life, but I think that's part- it partially gives awareness to it happening in real life when it does- when you do it in fantasy, but also makes it slightly realistic, sadly. But yeah, so she comes from a group of people that are not necessarily treated very well and her, along with some other people that she knows, feels like that this is definitely not right and definitely thinks that they should be treated better. And she herself sort of acts like she needs to be treated, treated with a, like a queen. Nothing wrong with that. You definitely, you definitely should be treated well. Perfectly fine, but she uh, sometimes is a little over the top with it. And I will say, when I found this, like, snake hairstyle, I was super excited. Granted... Which, you should have seen my drawing already. She does technically have snakes that are a lot longer and a little bit more of them. It's like thicker on her head, my drawing version. So that's the only thing with the Sims version that obviously these snakes are sort of small and tiny. There's not as many of them. And there, it's, you can see where the head is slightly more towards bald, other, except for they put the color and they put like the scales of the snakes on the skin. I still like how it looks, don't get me wrong. It's probably something to do with trying to keep it at a small polygon count or something, so that's probably why they did it the way that they did. But yeah, I do wish it looked a little bit thicker, because I ended up loving how her snake hair <laughs> turned out in my drawing. It took me a while and I got really confused with drawing all the danger noodles because they were wrapped around each other and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, which which one does this belong to? Which head belongs to the this half of the body? I'm confused. The danger noodles are crossing and it, it I, my brain hurts. <laughs> but ultimately, I really, really liked how it turned out. She does have a snake that sort of wraps around her. And it's actually a separate on snake thing. It's not attached to her, but I don't have a snake scarf in Sims, so it can represent that. But... Um, the snakes in her head are supposed to be s versions of blues, slightly greenish blues, but more towards blues, but this is what the color I went with in Sims. I, I don't think there was a, like, a blue that I wanted. I think this was the closest color to what I wanted. The snake that wraps around her is supposed to actually be, like, a golden yellow. I specifically, I actually wrote that it was supposed to be an eyelash viper. Um, so that's the snake that sort of sits around on her shoulder. 
And I want to imagine, so, like, with the wizards, you're supposed to have, like, a book or something that you get your spells and stuff off of, or that they're on or whatever. I want hers to be the snake in some sort of way. <laughs> so that's why she has the snake. <laughs> um, with Arietta's, hers was the skull thing. And with Valletta, hers is the snake. <laughs> so I had a little, I, I thought that was a little fun and interesting and stuff. But anyway, um... D&D lore, she is a wizard, but also a cleric. Um, her wizard is School of Illusion subclass, while her cleric is Trickery Domain. So she is slightly mischievous. Nothing wrong with that. I think part of it is because she's like, my people were messed with so, for so long. You can tolerate a little bit of a little bit of mischief towards you, right? Sort of situation. <laughs> and she definitely wants to explore more... Um, she wants to see outside of the world and also, like, you know, the whole thing about her people being treated. Like, you know, she, she wants to go out and be mischievous. Sort of like karma coming to get you. But she's going to be the one called bringing the karma <laughs> sort of situation. She's definitely not mean or necessar or anything necessarily. But, yeah, definitely a mischievous person. She, she definitely is that. Now, as far as her sim self, I did give her the aspiration of leader of the pack. It's partially because I do imagine her as being a very strong, strong lady. And a lot of people probably look up to her and she sort of sees herself in this potentially could be leader role. Thinking of herself as a queen sort of situation. And the traits I would like to be giving her are self-absorbed, outgoing, goofball, snob, and art lover. Now, the ones that I ended up focusing on were the self-absorbed, the snob, and the outgoing one. Because she does want to try to talk to people and spread things and, like, you know, talk about, like, how her people are. But then she also wants to be able to get close to people so she can slightly be mischievous. Self-absorbent is because she does think herself very highly of herself. That sort of goes along with the snob. Um, as far as the art lover, I do imagine, like, she does have sort of an elegant taste to her. Like, she, like, she likes some of the finer things. There is a lot leading, like, she really just thinks that she needs to be the queen of something. <laughs> in all honesty. And technically, in my D&D mansion build that I'm building, that I'm doing alongside the series, where all these characters will be stuffed into eventually, um, her room actually ended up being, like, designed before her because I rolled dice to see who gets to pick their rooms first and she got very high on the list so technically her room has been created and she has like a little throne area <laughs> I, I say with quotations but then the goofball I did because of her mischievous thing I think in her likes and dislikes uh, mischief is in the likes but you know goofball is sort of also just a silly side of her it's not necessarily supposed to be taken in a negative connotation but she is just sort of mischievous and goofy um so that is, that is the reason why I gave her those traits. Now, I will let you know, there's some parts in this video that look like they're stuttering a bit. It's, I think it is either her hair or the tail. There are certain items when it comes to create a sim that for some reason, once you put it on a sim, it makes everything else, every change that you do, load slowly. And... So that is what's happening. That's why she freezes up every once in a while. It's like loading the item. But if I had to go and cut out every single one of those, it would be a while. But also, you know, if you're ever doing a creative sim and you've never noticed this happening, like not even like for a video or anything, just on your own time, it's, it's, it's a thing that happens with certain CC items. Sometimes I decide to take those items out. Sometimes I don't. It just depends on if it's an item that I'm currently using for a particular reason or I know I would like to use a lot. So, like, her tail here, I've used it twice already. I used it for my Sims 4 occult discussions about Gorgons and I actually made some Sims using that. Sadly, I didn't have this hair at the time. I found this hair after that, um... Sims 4 discussions about the Gorgons, uh, having them in the game, that was one of the very, like, further out there ones. So, but yeah, I did use it for that, and now I'm also using it for her, and considering I'm gonna be having a mini-series that she's in, I can't really get rid of the tail, or the headpiece, because I need it for her. I think it is the tail, though, but yeah, that, that sort of just happens from time to time. 
So yeah, but ultimately I was pretty happy with using this tail piece. I did try the other one, but technically in my design, if you noticed earlier, I do have like this like sachet jewel belt like thing that is on her and it goes around her that's sitting right where her scaled body starts. So the fact that it has these little gold things on her fit really well and it does sort of have some middle coloration there because technically I have like the scales, like the small tiny scales on the side of her and then the big center scales to where she would be mainly slithering on. <laughs> it's not walking though in the sims obviously it looks like there's an attempt at walking <laughs> because uh it thinks that there's legs there. <laughs> it's quite funny I will say watching having the mini series and you'll see her and Taman walking around it's gonna be funny to watch them but there's also other characters who have like things on them like Ar Arietta has the giant wings and so does um Pira she has her wings and technically Oriana has her slightly little wings but I do actually take hers off in the thought process of hers being closed but yeah Oriana's wings they're so hard to see as is so imagine when she closes them up a lot of the clothes and stuff she wears are similar colors to her wings and her wings are like at least the parts that you can see so I did take them off for her but then there's like Efi that has her tail and her ears at all times someone else there's other people that have stuff that's like a little bit out there <laughs> um one of them you haven't seen yet, so she hasn't showed up. I can't think right now if there's- Oh! Oh! Muse and her, her foxtail thing <laughs> going on. So yeah, there's gonna be some people that when they're doing certain activities and some of them just walking around, it's gonna, it's gonna look interesting and sort of funny and hilarious and I'm so looking forward to just watching um just the silliness of stuff like that but then among that is gonna be like chaos ensuing I'm hoping I am I feel like with 30 some sims in one household even if you didn't have mods there would be naturally occurring chaos and though when it comes to like some of the programming behind sims I feel like there could be more things done for like gameplay to be happening in the background and such and like things like reactions of sims to stuff like you know like in sims 2 and like sims 3 there was more reactions to when sims did things and there was more backlash to doing certain things like if a sim got caught cheating there was a bigger reaction and so on and so forth but they seem to be though it's slowly it seems to be going that way at this point so I feel like just with even just the game itself without mods in there that there would be chaos ensuing but the fact that I also have mods in there really should help the chaos truly and fully unfold so <laughs> we're gonna see what happens but anyway you should be seeing Valetta's screenshots now let me know down in the comments below what do you think about her uh, i know some people are a little eh when it comes to snakes i'm sort of eh i'm more eh about spiders i guess they're about equal at this point but also like there's certain snakes that i don't mind to see them too much and like when i see pictures of spiders or snakes or even characters that have like some reference to spiders or snakes it doesn't necessarily bother me but I know some people get bothered by just seeing those things but yeah anyway <laughs> um hopefully you're not bothered by the snaky parts and you actually like how she turned out let me know your thoughts down in the comments below make sure you hit that lovely like button subscribe so that you don't miss out on future characters that are going to be following Valletta as well as the mini series and the build that is going along with this series as well but anyway hopefully I'll see you in the next one but until then bye bye